the house of prayer with Dr. Akatofe. But only speak a word. Matthew 8 verse 8. Join Dr. Akatofe as he teaches the word of God and prays with millions across the globe, strengthening our faith in Jesus Christ our Lord. Visit Amazon for a series of books authored by Dr. Toffe. Books titled Weaving the Web of Life, A Man with a Field, and Temptation with Purpose. The House of Prayer comes your way every Tuesday on YouTube via the channel The House of Prayer with Dr. Toffe. Please do subscribe, like, and share with others. The House of Prayer with Dr. Akatofe. Proclaiming Jesus Christ through the word and prayer. Welcome to the House of Prayer with Dr. Akatofe. Today I want us to look at a topic, God may have a hand in it. God may have a hand in it. You know, as believers, we face challenges, we face issues, we face problems. And uh, sometimes, especially for some of us, we are from places where demonic activities, witchcraft is so common. And uh, if we are not careful, we want to assign every pain, every suffering to the work of demons or witches. I understand we have demonic attacks. I understand we have watches working against us, but it is not everything that happened to us that is of Satan or demonic in nature. We may suffer, we may go through pain that, has not, that may have nothing to do with Satan. I just want us to come away with the understanding that the pain, the suffering that we face may have nothing to do with Satan or demonic activities. God may have a hand in it. And let us look at the life of Joseph to convince ourselves that it's not everything that we face that are not desirable. That is the work of Satan or demons. In Genesis chapter 37, we learned of Joseph's brothers selling him into slavery into Egypt. And whilst he was in Egypt as a slave, he ended up in the household of a person named Potiphar. And in Genesis chapter 39, we learned that the wife of Potiphar took a liking to Joseph. And when Joseph refused to go into bed with her, she accused him of attempted rape, as a result of which Joseph was thrown into prison. And whilst he was in prison, he had this encounter with the cupbearer of Pharaoh, who had had a dream, and Joseph interpreted it for him. And Joseph said to him, in Genesis chapter 40, verse 14, and 15, he said to the cabra, when Pharaoh lifts your head, remember me and show me kindness. And what he said that was so painful is out of the verse 15. For I was forcefully carried away from the land of the Hebrews, and over here, I've done nothing to be placed in that dungeon. Do you see the pain and the anguish of the language? Forcefully carried from the land of the Hebrews, and over here, I've done nothing to be placed in this dungeon because it's painful 
we might think that is the work of the demons. But let us go for we come to the understanding that his ordeal was actually the work of God. And so Joseph, at some point, left prison and he ended up in the household of Pharaoh. And he was placed in charge of gathering food for seven years of abundance and seven years of famine. I know you know the story. And the hunger or the famine that actually followed the seven years of abundance was so severe that Joseph's family ended up relocating from Canaan into Egypt. And whilst they came to Egypt, Joseph was already there to ensure that they were well settled. Of his enslavement, his imprisonment, and the hunger or the famine that came upon the land. This is what the psalmist said. Psalm 1, 0, 5, verse 16 and 17. He, that is God, called down famine on the land. He destroyed all their supplies of food. And he sent a man, Joseph, ahead of them, sold as a slave. God purposely called down famine on the land. He purposed for Joseph to be sold into slavery ahead of the Israelites. Not the work of demons, the work of God himself. And of the Israelites when they settled in Egypt, at some point, when we read Exodus chapter 1, a new king came on the scene who knew nothing about Joseph. And so he called to his people, Come now, let us deal treacherously with the Israelites. And his reason was that their numbers was too much for them. He said to his people, the people have increased so much in number. And if we are not careful, when war breaks out, they will join with our enemies and leave our country. And so he started, along with his people, treating the Israelites very badly. Is that the work of demons? Is that the work of Satan? Think again. Let us read Psalm 105, verse 24 and 25. The Lord made his people very fruitful, too numerous for their foes, whose hearts he turned to hate his people to conspire against his servants. And when you read us chapter seven, Stephen spoke about that. He said, when the time came for God to deliver the Israelites from bondage, he made their number so great for their enemies. And the psalmist is also talking about it. He caused them to hate his own people so that they will cry to him as a result of which he sent Moses to go and deliver them. And so you see that just because the Israelites were being oppressed, just because Joseph was sold into slavery, 
does not imply that Satan was against him. It had the handwriting of God. And of what happened to him, later Joseph will tell his brothers in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. As for you, you meant to harm me, but God meant it for good, the saving of many lives. My brothers, my sisters, yes, we'll face challenges, we'll face difficulties, some of which are very painful, some of which will cause us anguish of soul. But it may not be the work of the devil. Believe me, to the extent that suffering, that pain, will serve the purpose of God. As he has ordained it, he will let you go through it. But know for certain, he is with you. And you are able to stand whatever he allows in your way. When you read the account of Joseph, all we can know is that God was with him. God was with him. And even as I say, it's not everything that happens to you that is of the devil, but God may have a hand in it. You may be wondering, then which one do I know is the work of God? And which one do I know is the work of the devil? The Bible says the Spirit of God knows the mind of God. The Spirit of God knows the mind of God. And if that Spirit of God that knows the mind of God lives in you, the Holy Spirit, he will teach you what to pray. Just make sure you are living a life that God is always with you, just as he was with Joseph. And what you need to pray concerning your life, he will teach you what to pray. Oh, how beautiful it is that we have a God who directs our paths. Directing our paths also means whatever you have to pray concerning your life, He will ensure that you pray concerning that issue. Just look to Him. Let Him be your God. Let Him be your God. And know and believe that it's not everything that happens to you. It's of the devil. The Lord may have a hand in it. He had a hand in the sale of Joseph into Egypt so that his purposes and plans for Joseph as a ruler in Egypt would come to fruition. He had a hand in the famine that came on the land that forced the relocation of Joseph's family into Egypt so that his purpose and plan for the Israelites will come to fruition. He will do the same thing with you. Just embrace whatever he allows in your way. At the end of the day, or oh, at the end of the day, he will make you a masterpiece of his work. The Lord bless you. And if you are listening to me, and you don't know this God through Jesus Christ, I want to encourage you to make him your Lord so that his spirit can come and live in your heart so that you know what to pray concerning your life. And if you want to do that, pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner. I know 
I cannot help myself out of my sinful condition. But I believe you can. I believe you came to die for my sins. I believe you cleansed me by your blood. I believe you died and was raised by God the Father to give me a right standing with God. Lord Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and my personal Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. If I pray that prayer, you have become a believer. The Lord has taken you from darkness into the light of Christ. May you abide under his feet all the days of your life. And may the Holy Spirit guide you in all your endeavors in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for listening to me. Until then, this has been the house of prayer of the Taktofi. May the Lord bless you and make you a blessing to your peers, to your family, and know that not everything that happens to you is of the devil. The Lord may have a hand in it. God bless you. Amen. The House of Prayer with Dr. Akatofe, proclaiming Jesus Christ through the word and prayer.